Alrighty, I'm thinking it's going to start here. There it goes. The delay. <laughs> I never know quite what to say in the beginning because nobody's watching and it's like... Okay. And I apologize for having it at 4 o'clock today. I messed up when I put it on the schedule. I thought I was putting it for 3. So, uh, anyway, welcome. If anybody... Okay, Christine's here. <laughs> yeah, I was going to do the show on Sunday. And I've kind of gotten off of doing the Sunday shows. And I was hip deep in doing some stuff. And I'm the, totally on the other side of my brain. And uh, spaced it out. And it was like trying to switch gears when I was so deeply on one side and needing to switch to be creative on the other side was like this ain't gonna happen <laughs> so um anyway so i apologize for missing sunday that was that wasn't life happening that was totally all on me i was just deep deep in um in working away so um i apologize for that so we're gonna go ahead and finish the canvas up today um I also want to show you the first page of the album that's going to go along with this canvas. Um, and I'll probably at, one, probably at next Wednesday show, I'll show you real quickly. I'm not going to actually physically do it, but I'll show you how to turn the canvas into a box to hold the mini album. And then it can sit on a shelf or something like that. Um, but that I will show you um, probably next Wednesday. I'm not sure what we're going to be working on next Wednesday. Um, but I do have the first page of the album to show you, um, and that's done with the November morning paper, which went up. So I put up the November morning pa paper, which is now at 43 sheets. I may end up adding one more to it. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but it's now at 43 sheets, um, 10 of which are ones with fairies, ones without. So that or that's 20 sheets, so 10, 10 with fairies, 10 without fairies, similar patterns. Um, so that way, if you don't want to make it fairy-oriented, you don't have to, to give you some versatility um, with that. So, and that one's, um, the paper for that is called um, November Morning. It's kind of autumn -y kind of, towards autumn -y kind of feel to it. Um, I also put up the kits that are for, um, that we're working on that for the 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 canvas that we're working on right now now if you do want to make the album as well which is a freebie it's not um it's you don't have to buy the tutorial for it we we did it and it's here on youtube and it's also on my website called the double envelope album i have album packs in the black and craft and I have them in the white and those I should be getting the envelopes in next week sometime and as soon as those come in I will ship those out so if you want to make the album like I'm making um, the album pack or the um, envelope pack um, you can get that and then the papers um, the kit for the the um, uh, canvas you don't have to purchase anything else the cut aparts and stuff for that with the door and that i've included with that kit you just have to download and print those um so but you don't you don't need the whole paper collection unless you're doing um the album so the kit is is includes everything you need to make the kit other than the um the mediums and paste and all that kind of stuff and that those are available in the medium and paste um, multimedia um, mixed media um, pack so um, I have the mixed media pack up I have this reverse canvas that we're doing right now the kits up for that and as soon as everything gets here um, I'm waiting on stencils on that those will ship out next week I have the um, paper collection for the album up and I have um, the envelope packs available as well in both the black and craft which I'm using and I also did did them I have them available in the white as well for those of you who want to do use them for other things um, so anyway that's all of that that's available um, right now currently new stuff um, I am still working on getting videos done for some past projects um, 
and such. I'm just I'm having up some technical challenges doing district video um, because I've been doing so much streaming. It's kind of got things a little screwball, and I don't understand it well enough to figure it out. So I'm still I'm still figuring it all out, but we're getting there. So um, so then I'll have a whole bunch of video stuff going up. I'm still working on shipping stuff out to everyone, and um, we're just it's it's actually cruising along pretty well at this point. So. Um, I've, I'm excited about some new projects we have coming up, that sort of thing. So, um, but as I said, this, um, this kit is up and available, um, and we'll be shipping out very, very soon. So, um, does anybody have any questions real quick before we get started? Joy had a hard time getting on YouTube. Sometimes, some days are just like that. <laughs> some Wednesdays are Mondays. Some weeks are just Monday all week, so that's kind of what mine's kind of been. Ah, uh, so see, I'm not the only you know I'm not the only one that gets mine. Candy's working on the fairy garand, which was from a few years ago, and I know she's had it for a while, so it's not like she's just received it. So um, I get it. I also know you guys all have a big backlog as well as I do. So, alrighty. Well, I'm gonna since it doesn't seem to be any questions, I'm gonna go ahead and switch cameras, and we're gonna get started. So I got my new lighting in there. It seems to, except I still get a reflection, but that's I'm I'm not quite sure how to get rid of that. But the lighting it seems to be um, a lot brighter, um, and seems to give me um, better um, better to see you with. So this is um, the original canvas. We're doing similar to this. Slightly different coloration and we did a little bit different. Um, uh, we did the um, I want to say hydrangea and it's not hydrangea. Um, wisteria. So we did wisteria instead of the lilacs and, but we did use the same um, uh, stone increases, which we use for the stone. So that was the original one. This is where we got, um, during the last class, we got the door put on. We got all the stone work done, the frame done, and we got the wisteria done. So now we're ready to start adding, oh, excuse me, the foliage and that sort of thing. So let me set this aside for one minute. Um, this is the first page of the double envelope. I don't have it put into the book yet. I personally enjoy doing the pages not in the book and then adding them to the book because otherwise it's it's it just takes up less space on my desk trying to work on it. <coughs> so um, um, anyway, so this is the the front of the. We, I, and I'm doing it exactly how we did the other, the other one that I was using graphic 45 papers, and I just switched over and I, I, I switched over to this is with the November morning papers, and I recreated what I had done on there, um, including the same little, um, and I've added to it since then. So we've got the same little thing. This is a little pocket from a, um, a little coin envelope. There's a little tag, then a um, little pocket that I did up above it on this one. This also in the large pocket of this envelope, I've got this um, this little booklet that'll hold like six photos just in this little, or it could be for journaling as well. And that goes in the main pocket. I just added a little, a couple little details that weren't on the other one yet as I've just been finishing up and then duplicated that little tab, which kind of ties in with this little tab over here. Um, then this flips open here this is a pocket and I created a little tag just like similar to the one that we did on the other one. Um, this is a pocket as well here and then just like it was I used the the part the corner that we tore off I put it here and then I'm gonna take a little glassine envelope and um, the the pocket packs or the, the envelope packs include all the envelopes to make the pages just exactly how I have them and then I've also included coin envelopes and some glassine pouches um, to also for you to use so that it can it can come out 
very similar to what I have here. So then um, you'll have to just provide your own cords and lace and stuff like that because I decided not to do kits per se. Um, I just did the, the envelope um, sets. So, um, and then this is the bound, binding edge. So this will be bind, the bound. And then this is the flip side. And I did some lacing stuff down here at the bottom. And then I'll have tags that fit underneath that lacing. These, this is a, a letter, a number 10 letter envelope um, here. And and do it. So this is an envelope flap and then we created two pockets. If you recall we left a half inch piece here and then cut the envelope open on the top for both of those. And as I said I'll put tags in each end of that. It's got a button closure right there. And then inside a large area I still have to make the um, something goes in this pocket. And then I repeated what I had done on the front here with this little uh, coin envelope and did the same sort of thing here. I still have the little details that go on it. So this is a little pocket here. This is one of the three by four journaling cards. And then there's also a coin envelope, the, the larger six inch long one, um, so that there's a pocket right here for goodies to go into as well. Um, and that provides part of the closure for the back side of this page. So, so um, I'm just going to keep working on this and I'll show you progress um, as it goes along. I'm thoroughly enjoying doing, doing this. Um, I'm doing a lot of grunging the edges and curling edges and stuff like that, but you could just mat it completely flat um, if you chose to do so. So, um, but this is with the new November morning paper. I've showed it over on Paper Doodles. I did a video of that. I, I might do another video that, or if I can figure out how to copy that video and put it up on YouTube, I will, so that you can see what the papers, I don't want to go through, I have a bunch of them cut up anyway, but I don't want to take the time of going through the, the papers. But um, as you can see, it kind of has that towards autumn. And, the, and because this is the first page in the book, I thought duplicating the little door um, would be um, a lot of fun. So I'll, I'll just, you know, I'll also do a walkthrough video when it's all um, complete so that you can see that and see it all bound into um, an album. But I'm, I'm pleased with how it's coming along. I have a bunch of tag work still to do um, on that. So anyway, that is the... Um, double envelope album it's a free tutorial here on youtube so all right so we're ready to start working on our canvas now um i do want to do a little bit of prep work um you can't see it right now but i've got all sorts of my foliage stuff here's the stuff that we painted here's some of the stuff that um, and all of this stuff is included in the kit so um, the exact same um, I don't know what to, they're not really silk these are actually plastic but I um, am using I and I have been for many years now is I use a lot more um, purchased um, floral and foliage type stuff rather than the package stuff um, Petaloo, I used to use a lot of Petaloo, but Petaloo doesn't exist anymore. Kind of Prima. Prima is probably the major one. Um, and then there's a few other smaller ones. But the amount that you get for the buck is significantly smaller than purchasing stems of foliage and flowers and breaking those down. And I just like the look because you can get really cool and unique looks. I, like there's this fern stuff. I got these cool flowers that are actually cork. It's a thin layer of cork, which is really, they're gonna look really cool with this, the look. Um, some little um, sprig sticks. These are actually wires, but they look like little sticks. Um, then there's some kind of frosted looking velveteen type leaves. Um, 
And then I'm also, one of the things I also want to show you as well is you can get um, leaves that are really bright like we have on this one where they're, they're bright oranges and greens and stuff. Looks like actual leaves that I have, well, I had outside my door, but then we had, we had a 40 mile an hour gust windstorm yesterday. So our trees are now devoid of leaves and they've, they're blown three neighborhoods over, I'm, it, it appears. So we don't have any more leaves. Day before, Sarah took some pictures outside in the yard in the beautiful foliage and it was so pretty. And the next day it was all gone. <laughs> so, um, um, so anyway, um, but what I've done is taken these and what and I'm going to show you how to do this is I've taken these and I painted them with some white gesso and then because as leaves age, they get even lighter. I mean, they look really white on camera. They're not really as white as they look on camera. Um, and then I've inked over them with some distress inks and then spritzed them with water so they look like old, really old kind of crinkly, crusty old leaves that have been around for a while, that more subdued kind of, this light, I can change my color temperature, Let's see. Which one works about the best color wise? I'm gonna hold one of them up. I think that that warmy one there. Well, maybe we'll try this one for a while. Um, I think that's a little bit better color wise. It's not so. Yeah, that's that that's truer to the color. So they're like kind of like old leaves, and so I I'll show you how. Um, to do that but what when we're starting to put all this kind of stuff onto our canvas it's a good idea to have all of your materials all kind of um, prepped together so let's work on our this foliage stuff and I also promised that I would um, paint these guys as well because um, we'll go ahead and use um, those so I'm just going to use my white gesso for this I'm down to like <laughs> my last couple paper towels. And I just don't want to get a bunch of white stuff on my the gesso on my thing, so I'm just gonna do this on top. So what what the beauty of gesso is is it it kinda will stick to pretty much anything. So also if you wanted to add any kind of texturing type stuff into this if you want to give you know put some of that sand in into your gesso or something like that to give them kind of a a really kind of crusty <laughs> feel to them you could also do that then just kind of give it a quick dry kind of um, droplets and not just all over so and then I can do, then this is where it gives it that kind of old splotchy look because um, distress will react to the water and give it a watermarked kind of feel. Pop some of those drops on there. And that's going to just give it kind of that old worn look. So I did four of them beforehand and they were different colored leaves so different colors are coming. Some are more orange, some are more green. Like this is this is coming out a little greener because it was more of a greenish leaf. Take this to touch a few places with the. I don't want to get too too crazy. Just a couple. So it's kind of gotten a little bit of the black on there. You can use a brown one too. Just 
kind of highlighting, or I guess it would be more low lights if it's dark. Very soft hand. Just kind of, just barely tapping in spots. Now this is archival ink, so it is an alcohol or oil-based rather than a technically if it's an oil but it's not it's not a water base so it's not going to react with water so um, it's much more of a permanent ink so that gives us our leaves and they look much more in the palette of what I want so those are all ready to go and I can set those aside these are all of the pieces that we painted last time Kind of using the sagey color and the light greens. If I want to touch some highlights on them, maybe with my cracked pistachio, to add a little bit. And spots and places. I will also probably use my my um, just kind of just gives it a place if the light's hitting it. Um, but I'll use some of my vintage photo just to darken as well. Adding layers and depth of color is what is going to give you richness in life and not be so flat as if it was all one single color. It would be much more, more flat looking. So those are all the chipboard ones and then we have these ones that are done with out of the, the craft cardstock. So maybe hit that with the light up at the tip. He's a little more fragile, so be a little gentler with them. This is, I, I would say, as I think I said last time, this is done with a, one of the Tim Holtz those wildflowers and stuff. This is probably one of my very favorite Tim Holtz. Um, very versatile uh, uh, dye. Um, it just lends itself to so many things, whether it's winter, spring, summer. You know, you can totally tweak it to whatever direction you want. Okay, so then I've got those all highlighted. Now let's go in and and paint these guys. So I'm going to bring in the green. One of the greens. I think I'm going to go with a light, little bit lighter green. Picture I shake. I'm going to do a little bit of green right at the center. You do this with inks or watercolors as well. I'm just wanting to bring in the, some of the same colors, but I'm going with the lighter green on this one so they stand out a little bit more. So I'll take the darker green. Maybe a little bit lighter so I can, I can bring in my gesso again. Give some, just kind of touch on it, kind of almost dry brush it. Don't have to give it a lot. So I'm going to do that, just kind of give it that punch of the little bit of white. You could also use white acrylic, but I'm just going to, just so it's handy. And again, like I said, I'm just dry brushing it out kind of from the center. So it kind of looks like that. It's not completely covered. So you can bring in either paint or ink, depending on what color you want to make it.
This is where I can also bring back in some of that. Whoops. My uh, heat gun was wrapped around my chair. So I'm just going to, because they're handy and convenient, we used them before. I'm just going to bring in some of my um, my markers. Is that pretty pale? Let's use a pale one. Oh, I'm going to use a little bit darker. So and that will it will color differently on the gesso than it does on the craft. So just burst it out from that center. Do a little bit light. I'm doing a little bit lighter out towards the edges. So this is for Lois that I'm doing these in blue. Because I know she likes her blue. Keep a little bit of tan here at the center. And this, and this is kind of a tan, but on top of the the blue and the white gesso, it's coming out kind of almost a greenish tone. So, getting the tips of those. Just a touch of the violet here and there. I love this flower. I think it's a fun little flower to do. Here. So quick, you can use distress markers, you could use really paint, you could use just about anything to just give them just a touch of a little burst of color, but I wanted um, the, the white. To kind of give it a base so it brightens it up on the craft. Got a good drawing. So, and then having those being that little bit different green, it'll also stand out just a touch against the other ones and with the tips of these. So, just hit the top tips of those with a little bit of my um, favorite vintage photo or whatever your favorite ink is. Do the same thing. This. It is, you know, autumn, so our leaves all have, at least, well, unless you, you know, someplace like Southern California, Florida, where you don't get really <laughs> that kind of weather, but everything's starting to kind of dull down and tone down, so that's why I use the kind of silvery green color, and the paints that I've used on this one are all included in the kit as well. So you're getting the paint color, so it's a great way to start building up your acrylic paints stash because you'll be able to use those on other projects. If on a future project I'm using the same color of paint, I will just have that. Uh, I won't put it in a second kit, but I will have it available for those who didn't purchase this kit if they want to buy it individually. So I won't be duplicating sprays or paints into the future. All right, so I did braid up here at the top, so I'll be bringing in some of this down at the, the bottom. Again, these are pretty fragile, so be gentle. Just a couple more, and then we'll get glue and stuff down. Get my hot glue gun on while I'm thinking about it. I do like to use, just for the speed of it, I like to use um, hot glue, but then I will also add in other adhesive to hold things in place. But the hot glue makes it pretty convenient while you're getting 
set up or get, getting stuff laid out and stuff. Okay, so I've got these guys all good to go. Got the oh, and I have okay. now. I ended up not using these kinds of leaves. I decided to go with these. You could do the same sort of thing with um, die cut leaves if you wanted to. Few more in here that I haven't. I had done a quick kind of layout of how I, how I wanted things to look, so I hadn't had these. Out. But I want to have them ready to go in case I use them. Now, um, <coughs> in the, the um, kit that I have available with the mi mixed media, I did go with the, um, the cracked pistachio um, rather than the ink pad. I went with the re-inker because you can just use um, um, cosmetic little foam pieces and you can put you can put the ink on this and do the same sort of thing and then we'll also be able to use this in different ways on future projects and that's why I went with the re-inker versus the pad I just happen to use the pad all the time so um, but you can use it just with cosmetic the the synthetic cosmetic sponges Alright, so we've got all of our different little foliage pieces all ready to go. So I'm going to make my little pile. The only one I haven't done anything to yet is this one, because I'm not sure if we're going to use that one yet or not. And if we do, then we'll we'll go ahead and, and do something with it. Um, it's delaminating. Um, it can be painted. Um, on the original one, I did it with... Um, I painted it and then had some um, texturizing and such with some embossing, some heat embossing on it. So. More baby wipes. I'm going through them a bunch lately. So. I wish I had a sink here in my studio. I'm literally right above the kitchen. So, <laughs> if we were gonna stay in this house forever and ever, I would, I would talk my husband into it. But I don't know how long we'll be in this house. So, all right. So I've got we've got this portion good to go. Um, the other thing that we're going to be using is we've got a bit of this kind of cool um, mesh-like ribbon. Um, we've got some pine cones. We got some sparkly balls. Um, we've got some cotton things. We've got a few sticks here. There's all sorts of goodies, but I've got them in a little tray um, set over here. This is my new way of keeping. This is all the kit stuff has been all in this little tray. So I'm, I'm trying to have an easy way to keep everything all together. So it's not just in a big old pile on my side table. So I can clear it off. So I'm in the zone. Why? Did somebody ask a question and I missed it? Now one of the things because of having you know we've got some nice depth here by using the reverse side of the canvas is we want to keep those those depth levels and that sort of thing now with this piece it's going to and i'm going to need to stretch it a little so that it stays i did the same sort of thing with chicken wire running down the one side on the um the original one see on this one we have chicken wire going down the side but I liked this stuff was so cool and it kind of fit more with that kind of frosty kind of look. Now before I would attach this though I want to put some of the the layers of foliage underneath and then there will be some more layers um, on the top. So these are out of 
excuse me, chipboard, but don't be afraid to kind of bend them a little bit. Give them a little bit of shaping so that they have a more realistic look to them. And I know I probably want one of them kind of down here beside the door. So bending it a little bit. Now that's not going to be underneath the mesh, but some of these larger ones, I kind of want these more. Um, and again, we can bend some of these leaves up on this. Now I don't want to go from this layer to where it pops up, but I can bend those there and it can pop up above there just because a natural leaf uh, branch would do that sort of thing. So I just, because I'm going to put this over it, it might poke through it or something like that, which is fine. But don't be afraid to give these a little bit of dimension. And so I can maybe have it down tight there. Now I may want to move stuff down just a little bit. I don't mind it kind of coming around the door, but I don't want to cover over my um, my wisteria very much. So maybe move those down, and then maybe that's a good um, a good spot for them. I also don't want to be afraid to maybe put a a flower underneath. Probably put more flowers up above than underneath. So kind of think that one goes there. So then test it out. And say, yeah, I like how that's looking. It gives me some depth underneath. Because then we're maybe going to put, um, you know, this guy. Maybe this guy's going to go on the top. So you can kind of audition things. You can lay this on top of there. Maybe I have a couple of these guys coming out over here by this one. Maybe this guy's coming out with the door being popped up. It's going to pop out from under there. Maybe there's one of these is tucked back from underneath there. Have now, you don't, just because we have them here doesn't mean we have to use all of them. But the density kind of gives it more of a feeling like you really are in the woods. So, let's see how you're starting to just get a feel for the, the layers and that, that sort of thing. And I'm going to probably want to put these guys, you know, like I did on the original, over in here. Maybe those will go down, and then this guy goes on top of it, and then those guys, and there as well. Maybe there's going to be one of these little leaves that covers over some of that. Um, I've also got these guys that are going to be able to pop in. Maybe I have one or two of these up here on the top as if it were a, the branch of a tree. Pops in up from behind there. Then I've got these kind of cool leaves as well and I can cut those off individually rather than keeping them as a group. Okay, not too long of a step. Cut that off. Tuck that. And just start placing some of these things to where, okay, so maybe that's going to pop out from underneath as well. I 
maybe this one gets a pair down here. And this is going to have a couple of leaves down here. Maybe there's another leaf. Oops, there's a stem. <laughs> leaf there. I don't necessarily want them on all the corners. I'm going to have to decide whether I'm going to put this guy in there. Maybe he's... There's a fat leaf. And one of these pieces. Add some of my flowers in. So you're just starting to build that layer. Now, and then what I do is I kind of get it laid out. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I have these sticks that I want to put in too. And I'm going to put them in down kind of like they're like a pathway. Down here. Put things in back behind. So it almost looks like a pathway coming up. And then these guys are probably going to poke down in here. And I liked, I originally liked this out with the leaves being their brighter colors. And I much prefer this kind of almost frosty kind of look with this palette. And then you kind of got the little rusty flowers. But it gives a completely different kind of look to it. So we got that. Then I've got some little pine cones that I'm probably going to pop in. Maybe there's one up here. A couple of them down here. And then I've got these cool little... Oh, these things are cool too. I've got these little... Maybe that guy goes up there. There's one down here. So heavy for up there. Maybe he goes down here. Move this out that way. It's there. It's cotton. I don't know what they're called. Cotton thingers. <laughs> now, I, because I want this to be a box, I don't want any too much hanging down below the base of that. Then I've got these little sparkly little ball guy things. So maybe these these can go. These will get glued in at the end. I'm just kind of giving them a see what they look like for right now. Maybe there's one underneath here that helps hold all that up. See, I'm liking how that all is looking right now. But see, so I've kind of gone, it's like, okay, I'm liking how that's all looking. I think I do want to put this in, but I think Color-wise, it wants to be in that lighter type tone, that whitish type tone. So what I do now is we all have our phones now. So what you can do is just put your phone over the top and take a picture. So now I have turned the wrong way, but I have a photo. Whoops a photo of how I have it laid out so then when I start taking the layers off so that I can start gluing it down I've got the photo but this is this is the look that I wanted to go for it's a little bit frostier you know this is like September and then this is more towards end of October like we are right now still got some color in there but it's not quite as intense and bright as this one. It's just softer, so I'm super stoked. But it's got a lot of layers and depth and dimensions. So let me pick it up and show you. So you can see how it's got the depth. It's got some dimension in it. But just playing with it for a little bit this way, then it's like, oh, I don't like that. You know, can move things. So 
now I can start deconstructing it back again so that I can put it back together because I have a picture of how I had it laid out. So okay, all these pieces that I ended up not using, I'm going to set those off to the side so that I don't get confused as to where they come from. So if I've got a little grouping that's down in this corner, I set it like that. If I've got this little group, okay, it's upper corner, lower corner kind of thing. This is all upper corner, so I can set that maybe in one spot. This is the lower corner. And these guys are going to just place where I decide I want to place them at the very end. So. And again, lower corner, so put that by the lower corner pile. lower corner so then I can just pop this up lay it off to the side so then I can start gluing this stuff down so once I've peeled this off if I need to so that I get this how underneath that thing looks take another picture because you couldn't really see that through all those layers so pop those guys out of there so now I can start gluing things down. Now, in terms of adhesives, I can use my regular tacky glue. The other thing that makes an incredibly great adhesive is your gel medium. I, I like to use the matte medium because it doesn't catch any gloss and light stuff. But the problem with using the medium is it does take some time for it to dry. So many times, like with these sticks, anything that's like heavier, using the medium, if you can allow it drying time, that will help you out an awful lot. I also will then use, sometimes I'll use the medium. Um, is this the one that I couldn't get open before? It dries close, and my shoulder is screaming today, so. All right, well, we'll go to gloss. I'm just having trouble with these guys. I need to take the time to <laughs> clean the lid. Because I'm letting it be goopy and I really dry it on. Okay, so I'm using the gloss one today. See, I need to go through and clean out the mess that's on the why it keeps drying on because it dries it on the all right all right well now it's not the time to do this but anyway so I can just take a brush and put some of the meat and now it looks white but it'll dry clear but this is great glue okay so I'm going to take and for most of the stick, most of the stick, I've got that on there. And now I'm also going to take, of course, my glue gun is out of glue. Which I, oh god, that hurts to stretch. Oh. I'm not saying swear words. I won't. I won't. I won't. So I'm going to put some hot glue there, right in that little spot in the middle, so that it'll hold it for speed's sake, and then the, the actual, see, so now that's held in place, but this is what's actually going to glue it down, because as we all know, the glue stick will, um, let's hold it the way I can hold it to start with, the glue, let me put that on first, the glue stick will dry up and release and if you have any question about that I will pull out all of the uh, trade albums that I did when I first started paper crafting from 10 years ago that I received and the number of people who use hot glue on them and how that hot glue was all releasing <laughs>
and this this the um, gel medium you really won't ever see it so don't worry about putting it on a little bit thick it'll hold it on better and it will dry clear and um, keep things like your sticks from I had a bump in it that I wasn't expecting. And if there's ever like a spot of glue stuck, we can always sprinkle some some moss, some sand, something like that on it. I think I'm gonna put one more stick in there. I'm gonna come out there. That'd be perfect. I didn't put my towel in my lap, uh, and I have my good jeans on, so I don't want to wipe it on my jeans. That would not be good. Okay, so the the hot glue gives me the immediacy of getting that attached down, and the um, then the um, gel medium will actually hold it in place. So. that out so I remember to clean it. Oh, Gorilla Glue makes glue sticks now? Hmm, that's that's cool. Alright, so let's go in and with these guys, I'm going to use my regular glue. Where you at, Sam? Oh! Oh, Tigger. Tigger's locked in here. He's not happy about it. Let me let him out in just a second or two here. So I'm just going to put regular glue on this guy. I can also have some dots, you know, foam dots or little pieces of chipboard or cards, um, cardboard underneath to give some depth. But since I already have the, the, the um, door lifted up, having this... Um, in place here. I help hold that there. Just a couple of spots with my glue then so that it doesn't run around. Okay, so this guy's gonna go tuck him back underneath there. And I could also use, on this, I could also use the, um, the gel medium to attach these guys down as well. These guys don't need much. Alright, see so now I can refer to my photo and see what else I had in there. Okay, so I had one of these guys. Oops, stay there. One of these guys, and then I had these two. One down here. One up here. Oh, let's come down over that. Okay, so I can use that as my reference Let's put your glue gun glue on last because it sticks 
um, faster. <laughs> These guys are also going to be trapped underneath, so if I d ended up with no glue on them and just used my hot glue, chances are it's not going to go anywhere. But I can add some insurance glue after I've got it placed the way I've got that one in there. In. All right, and I think I'm probably going to put one of these balls up here because that's going to help hold. Maybe I'll go right, right there because that's going to help hold my um, netting stuff up a bit. All right, so that, that really held by having this so I could recreate it now again. So this Uh, I can snip this away a little bit to go around my, my little sticks, which is fine. I'm going to have it overlap on the side just slightly and then pull it. So this is this little ball under there is really helping hold this up out of the way. Oh, you're both in here. You guys want out? Tigger and Salem have become the best, best buddies. Cast iron fingers. Touch that down. Let it cool. That way I won't get strings. So that's attached down at that end. Let's turn some of it off. I'll wrap it around to the underside to the side. Trim that off a little bit. I'm going to try to keep it more of a serpentine-ish, natural-ish type of shape. <laughs> that was hot. Yeah, it's cute watching um, um, Tigger. He's definitely much more playful than he's been in a very long time. Having the baby to play with, and it, it was funny. They sat there on the, the couch here in my studio um, the other day, and um, it was really very cute because um, Tigger gave Salem a full bath. It was like it was so sweet. Okay, so we're just gonna add some spots, hold it in place. And there's some of the thicker spots in there. Mm -hmm. Do a couple of them with my. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I was ringing, but it's a number that I know I don't need to answer right away. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you have a bunch of strings of glue, hot glue, as you know, those of you who don't know, you can take your hot gun and melt them. There, I just melted those all away. 
So there I've got that mesh kind of ribbony stuff all glued down. So now I can I can then go to my previous photo. Let's edit it so that I can turn it. Come on, turn. Turn. There we go. Done. Okay. All right, so then I can see better um, what all I have there. So I have, up in this upper corner, I have these kind of bows. I can kind of glue them on. Just, you know, and as I said, use your favorite glue or the medium. Whichever one you find works good for you. You might have to experiment around a little bit. So it may may require that you play with whatever works in your climate, because not everything works in all climates. You know, Joy and I know that from um, you know she's been in Hawaii, and I'm in uh, Washington. We have very different different climates. So I'm not going to let put that on there yet. I'm just going to kind of pop it into place. So then I'm going to pop this guy in there. A couple of spot glues. that right next to the door. These guys don't require much in the way of the, the hot glue because they're not as heavy so they're not going to go as quickly. And the, the quick dry tacky glue stuff does dry pretty quickly. So. And then I can always tack down additional leaves as necessary once I have this kind of set. And again, because I'm going to turn this into a box, I don't want things hanging below the bottom edge. So they can hang off the sides, I just don't want them hanging off the bottom edge. And this one was the one that was tucked underneath. And again, if I want him to have some depth off of the back, I could also mount him on some foam dots. But I'm okay with him being relatively flat because then I can just bend up some of the leaves. Same with these. You can bend some around. Especially once it's dry. You can fiddle with it a little bit more too. Okay, you're moving around too much so I'm going to put some glue there. So you to hold still. You need to hold still as well. Alright, so I need my picture back up. Let me just show you guys all my phone code. My phone code, huh? Alright, so then I'm going to take one of these guys. This guy's going to go kind of right in here.
So he's going to go right here. And it, there's no wrong placement. So if you want to place them right where I'm placing them, you can. That's kind of here, sort of in the center on, on the top of this mesh. Um, you, can, you can do kind of the exact placement that I am. So this guy, he's going to go right about in there, but I'm going to bend him a little bit just like I did the other other ones. I should have put my glue on first and not my hot glue. Kind of coming from that center. Phone needs to stay on longer. What if I have this other spray? Okay. You can go kind of like right there. And I'll add some glue to him in a little bit. Alright, so then I want to get these guys worked in. stick to him. This one's a little bit lower. Okay. I'm just going to put the glue on and get him set down in there so I just tuck him under the bottom of that. And give him a little blob of hot glue. Is it giving that layering is going to give it much more depth too, and it gives you shadow lines and things like that. So, okay, let's get this guy. Ugh, come on. See, at this point, I would be frustrated, and I would probably print this out. <laughs> I kind of like this leaf. This flower's got a little bit more character to it, so I think I'm going to put him in there. down in this corner, put in this, whatever this cotton dooly wobble doodle is, and I'll sneak some glue underneath there as well, so that he stays permanently. Tuck a leaf under there. And I want him to be a little bit, that leaf, I want him to be a little bit higher. I'm going to take a piece of cardboard. Glue those together. And take and stick that underneath there. It gets covered over, but it gives it some depth and support so that he pops up a little bit more. Okay. 
don't know if I had another leaf underneath here. I don't know, but I like it there, so I'm going to put it there. Okay. When I come back over to this corner, I have one of these. I'll tuck that one little section under so I don't hang over the bottom. Now one thing with the hot glue, when you're attaching things that are fabric, it seems to release um, less. <laughs> it seems to hold a little bit better. But I'll, I'll go in and add more um, glue and such into this to hold more stuff in place. So there down in that corner, you can see all the different goodies I have in that corner. to see if I want another one of these in here. Maybe fold them up just a little. Maybe we can tuck underneath there. Yeah, see, I like that coming out from there. That works. And you just kind of play until you like how it's arranged in there. And then I've got some pine cones. I'm going to pop a pine cone right in there. I'm running out of hot glue. Come on. So I'll pop some regular glue in with it. to find another glue stick. Where did I put them all? I had them over here. Where, where did I put the glue sticks? I moved them so the ears are easier to get to, but then, you know, when you forget where you put them, it's not a good plan. Some of them have some wires on them, so that helps to kind of give it something to grab on. Let's put another one down in there. Did I have them like that? Did I have, I had it over here, didn't I? Or how did I have that? Oh, this guy wasn't on, oh no, I have him. This guy was over here. I think I'm going to put him up. Maybe he can still go down there. I'm not liking it. I like just this one here. That could go up there. Everything's kind of weighted on this side. I might just use one of these. Because I don't like even numbers. I much prefer odd numbers. And I like how this is looking down here right now. So I don't want to mess with that too much. One of these little balls. I 
I just love these sparkly balls. They've got such cool color to them. Maybe do a pair of them. So it's kind of almost like, you know, um, kind of fits in with the magic of the fairy stuff. Kind of has that feel to it. Right there. And one more small one. But see, some of that stuff, it's like, I'm, you know, you go, oh, but you covered over. But it's like you can see little glimpses of it back behind. So it's okay. There's another pine cone up there. That's going to go there. I'm going to have that coming in from here. I'm going to do this. Alright, so now we just have to paint that. Then we'll work these guys down inside, potentially, or from the outside there. That one's going to be cool. So I like where that stick's going to go, and then this stick's going to go over on this side, and as I said, so kind of wires down at the bottom at least. I'll tuck it underneath everything here. I need to go that way. Kind of stays with the shape of the door. But let's get this guy done. I decided I didn't want him in there. Oh, actually, he can kind of go right there. And that looks kind of cool. That would work. Let's do that. I like them right there. So I think that's looking really cool. Alright, let's get this guy on and then all we have to do is that corner. Last him with some Glue. And again, everything I'm put hooking on with hot glue, I'm going to go back in with some um, more glue and medium and stuff. Because I can take a paintbrush with medium and kind of stuff it down inside edges and stuff like that. And I'm going to cover over this one a little bit with this guy. Cover over that wire a bit with him. Oh, stupid thing. Stupid thing that else get in the way sometimes. Okay, and well, now you can go stick him down in there too. And then we all we have it left as a corner. So this part of the whole process goes very quickly. What seems to take the time is getting everything all prepped and good to go. Alright, so I don't have any more pieces and parts out here. Um, we can glue this guy on, and then we'll do that corner. And then we will be done. So you can see how it's coming along. Definitely, here, let's cut this off so it doesn't fall off. Everything else is hooked down. But so you can see here how it's got all that depth. And that just gives it such visual interest when you've got all those layers and that depth. So it's kind of as if, if you've come across this little door in the woods. Alright, 
So these guys go on top, so we gotta do this guy first. So. Set him here. Um, and I have a couple of, these are Stampendous. This one's Aged Copper and Aged Aqua. So I'm gonna do those two. And I don't know where my embossing medium is, so um, embossing pad is. So I can use my gel medium if I can get the lid off again. <laughs> Just had it off. That kind of shows you how fast the medium dries. Actually, I don't want to do it on my paper that I'm going to put my stuff on. Let's do it on here. Too fast. Just put that in case I need more of it, so I'm gonna just do. I'm gonna do a little bit of copper, maybe down here at this end. Press it in. dried a little bit already. So a little bit more on. I made a mess of this jar. Obviously embossing stuff doesn't dry quite as fast as this stuff does. But you can use it. <laughs> so, all right. So, and I'm just gonna kind of mix them together a little bit there. And if you're concerned that they might get mixed together, you can always make a pot, a little container that just has a mixture of all sorts of stuff in it. It won't matter. But I don't, I'm not a super purist about this stuff, so if it got a little bit of a different color in it, that's fine. Just because I don't want this to emboss onto my, though it wipes off even if it, I emboss it onto my my mat here. I need to get this mat a good scrubbing. Let's cover this up before I make a mess of it further. See, there's my problem. See, I gotta be able to blop, and then I leave that blop on there and put the lid on. And then it makes it hard to get off. I'm such a messy person. <laughs> Yeah, my computer, that my laptop sometimes makes more noise than others. It's the fan on it, so I apologize if it bo bothers you. Unfortunately, is right by the mic. Turn the mic a little. See if that helps at all.
If I knew what I did with my tweezers, I could pick it up and heat it, but I forgot where my tweezers are, so... What's really cool with this too is by using the medium, the medium kind of, the gel medium kind of bubbles a little bit. So it gives it even more cool texture. And I think that's why I like using the gel medium versus my embossing pad is because it gives you a kind of a bubblier texture and I'm looking for that kind of cool melted texture. Get that to stop the switch. So see how that's got some really cool, it's got some of the metal, it's got a lot of texture. It's hard to see. It's very cool. Go down. Make some of that edge that didn't get covered. And a little greener, add a little bit of the oxide of the pistachio on top, a little bit more. Now one of the things I could have done too is I could have gessoed this, this either with the white gesso or the clear gesso and then put the medium on top and my medium wouldn't have dried so quickly, but what was happening with my medium is it dried right into the chipboard. It just sucked right in. So, But color-wise, I'm pleased with how that came out. It's kind of like a wind swirl here. I love it against the, the background. And then having this kind of coming here. So it pops kind of that swirl kind of coming out there. So... See, by toning down these leaves, they're that bright, you know, beautiful autumny color, but this fits better with the palette that I've got going by having the more neutral toned leaves, so I'm very pleased with them. Sticking it just a bit. And then if I wanted to, um, I could use some moss. Um, and I could scatter some moss in places. You will have moss in your kits. I just didn't bring any up. But as we all, those of you who've been around for my fairy house and stuff know that the moss can add. Oh, I'm very happy with how this came out. So there's down the door. But lots, by having that depth, it just adds such visual interest. Let's see if I can tone the light down just a couple. So it's not, there that it's not flooding it out so badly. Maybe this one's doing that. There we go. And there's that corner with that swirl. And then back in the very back you see the um, the stenciling. But I'm very, very pleased with how that is um, has come out. So color wise you can see now how it kind of ties in with this with the purples and the kind of pinky colors picking up that. So um, 
And this will be the front of a box, and the album will set behind it. So, yeah, I want to put some moss along down here along these sticks, a couple of other, you know, little bitty places is adding some little moss in. I just don't know how to do with my moss. <laughs> I had some out. So, um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm like super, super stoked with how this came out. It came out somewhat better than I was hoping, which is always, always a good thing. So anyway, hopefully you can now see by seeing how it structures from the bottom up, you can see how it's really, they look much more complicated and much more challenging to do than if you um, were just seeing it and going, I have no clue how to put that together. So, uh, yeah, these little cotton things are, I'm glad I got both of them on there. So, um, and because they're heavy, so they needed to kind of down be down here by the bottom. So, this guy might have to tweak, tweak it. No, I think he's okay. I'm going to stand it up. He'll be fine. I might have to move him just a squidge. Oh, that stick just wanted to move, so that's perfect. There. That puts them up a little bit higher. So, fun to do. And as I said, the kits for this include the canvas, include the stencils, the paints, the sprays. You could also spray this if you wanted to with a light spray of sparkle. Um, just you just make sure you're a distance from it before you spray with one of the more neutral, like the green one or something like that. Um, but it includes all the die cuts, the leaves, you know, all like these little sprigs, all the little foliage die cuts in chipboard and cardstock. You know, the pine cones, the cotton little thingies, the flowers, the little. Um, sparkle balls, you know, everything that's on here, these little sticks, everything that's on here is included in the kit, you know. So, um, if you wanted to make this, it's got all the goodies. You don't have to go find them. So, um, and those are available in my shop. The quantities are limited. Um, I have everything except the stencils and the sprays um, are on their way. So, um, um, I would not use gesso to emboss, no. I use the matte medium, or the medium, gel medium, when I emboss this. I wouldn't necessarily use the gesso. Gesso's going to dry too fast. It was the gel medium. Um, be aware, though, I wanted a lot of texture on that. When you are using the gel medium, when you heat it, it can bubble and, and, and such. So it's going to give you that bubbly texture. If you don't want the bubbly texture, then you should use an embossing. But I'm using the gel medium because I don't mind that it's going to bubble. Alrighty. Any other questions? Ugh, my hands are a mess. Thank goodness for... gel nails so I'll get this all off and my manicure still look decent <laughs> but alrighty guys well we got done a few minutes early because this goes so quickly so um, but this was a lot of fun now we'll be back next Wednesday with another who knows what went what's up Wednesday <laughs> so um, I have some fun ideas for just like you know one day type classes and stuff coming up for Wednesdays um, it's taken a lot of the pressure off of me by by just doing fun Wednesdays now, now this is a special thing because I had done the um, the autumn one since I had done this one on the um, the website for um, um, the crafters workshop for the stencils and the mediums. Um, 
So I d decided to go ahead and do the special class, and that's hence the reason why we have this one, and I didn't want to duplicate the same thing. But essentially, everything here is exactly the same, except it has different flowers, and so this one has the cotton and the, the pine cones and the little um, curly ball, um, sparkly balls. Um, but, and then it ha has the, this ribbon instead of the chicken wire. Everything else, it's exact same foliage, exact same quantity. I see these are the same here. Exact same stuff. Oh, I know what I left off of here. And you need to, to squid one in. I have my little fairy. So let's, okay, so we still got a few minutes. Let me turn my light back up again. Um, fussy cut out my little fairy. So you can use fussy cuts and you've got the two sheets of these um, cut aparts to use um, that are part of the download for this kit. They're also included in the paper collection um, but you don't have to buy the paper collection to get these with the, um, the kit. But I wanted this little fairy guy in there. So I just, I'm not cutting it right on the line, so I'm cutting it close to the line. I'll show you after I get a piece cut out. Um, you know, when I, I look at, like, the die cuts and stuff for, like, Kaiser Craft and some of those, those cut out a ways away from the image rather than trying to cut it right on the image. And you cut as close as you feel comfortable to consistently do that. There, so you, now you can see how I've cut close to, but not right on it. I knew I was going to set him down off to the side, and I would forget him. Oh, stretch out. And I want to cut the center point out too. Otherwise, it's an awfully big piece of white. And these are in the kits as a digital download, these two sheets. So then you just download them and you can just print them on your home printer, or take them over to the office supply place if you haven't used my digital papers before they're just JPEG files so you don't need any special program to be able to open and print them okay so there super fast fussy cut out of him just not sure where I want him to go. We'll see. See, I have had him as planned in there, so he could kind of poke right in down in there. I also do want to do so it's, the white doesn't stand out. Just a dusting with the vintage photo on it. it doesn't stand out quite so stark. And I just put that down 
Actually, I'll pop it back up again. So we can tuck back in behind these guys a little bit more. So he kind of tucks in there, kind of cute. I don't want to fussy around, around some to tuck him back in a little bit more, but I think him just kind of peeking his nose out from behind there, he looks kind of cute. Maybe I won't, I might pop the acorns off. I don't want those out there as much, but I, I think I want it, here's what I want to do. I'm just going to cut this part off. So it'll fit better. So I'm just taking that little piece off. And then he fits a little better back behind there. There. Now he, now he works. So we can just have my little fairy guy kind of stick it out. So he kind of blends in. I, I think I want to mess with um, my um, ink on there a little since I'm doing this super quick. Um, so that he kind of fits in there a little bit better. I may, I may take this one off. Yeah. Pop it in a layer below. And that's probably what I'll do. Let's just have it be attached a layer below so it has some depth on him too. So there I can add my little fairy in and work him in. And I want him a little bit hidden. So having that little fairy guy tucked back behind there. Yeah, but popping those in. And, and then having that, that layering and depth gives that some more um, reason why that's there. So. Alrighty, I'm much happier with my little guy in there, and I'll I'll clean up my fussy cutting and glue him in. Um, but having him just tucked in there is kind of fun. So, anyway, all right. So there, there we go. So, thank you to Lois and to Joy for helping me out today. Always appreciated. And uh, so fun little project, as you can see. Last time took us about two hours to prep the canvas, put our stenciling on, get the door on, and then not quite two hours to glue, to you know lay everything out and get it all glued down. So um, as you can see, it's not a really long, difficult project. And hopefully since you've seen it from blank canvas and through the, the layering and the creating the depth you can now see that it's not as intimidating as it may look like it is. And you can go ahead and try it for yourself. So, Alrighty, guys. It's been fun. This is this is totally the kind of stuff that I love, 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 love doing. And I think I've, I've um, got enough of you interested in, in trying this. I think I've got enough people who want to do this sort of thing that I have quite a few more projects coming up. Um, in this kind of look and feel. So hopefully um, you can get excited about that. So alrighty, again, thank you to Joy. Thank you to Lois. I appreciate them helping me out, but I also, more than that, I appreciate all of you um, joining me here in my studio um, while we get to play. Um, it's been fun getting to play and um, so we will see you then next Wednesday. Not sure what we're going to do. Um, be kind of just fun and um, playtime. So anyway, um, and I've got other videos that are going to be going up this week for these um, some of these other projects. So once I have projects that I can show you, I will also be showing those to you on Wednesdays. All right, guys. Thanks so much. And we will see you next Wednesday. So peace out. Love you guys all bunches. Bye for now.